Well, howdy. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for joining me again for another live Q&A session here on my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Warm welcome to you virtually. <laughs> my name is Angela. I'm a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator. And my channel is dedicated to those of you just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And through my channel, I share with you some tips and tricks and techniques, things I do every day in my own voiceover business. And then we gather every week in these live Q&A sessions for some discussions, right? Answer your questions and you guys share information with everybody else watching. So this has been fabulous. I think um, just from feedback, it's been very helpful for a lot of you. So that is the purpose of this. So thank you again for joining. If you're not new here, then you know every week we have a new poll or a topic to talk about every week. And this week, that poll is, the question is, what type of recording space do you have? As we've talked about many times before, there's a lot of different ways to make a recording space. And as we know, your recording space is one of the most important aspects of this, right? Yeah, there's learning the, the terminology, the acting part, the narrating part, the technical part, but your recording space is one of the most important parts. It has to sound good. It doesn't have to look pretty. It does not have to be pretty. It just has to sound good, right? So I wanted to know what kind of recording spaces you guys have. And if you have one built, if you DIY'd it, please share that in the comments for those of you that haven't even built one yet, haven't even considered building one yet. So hopefully it'll give some of you some ideas on, on what you can do. Hopefully, you know, spark an idea. So the poll questions were, and of course I am limited in character, so I couldn't get too detailed, but basically, did you DIY or build it, you know, out of PVC and moving blankets or blankets or you duvet covers or something? Or have you taken a closet, much like I have, and converted it into a recording space? Or do you have a whisper room, a studio of bricks, like a I can't say prefab, but like a, a booth that you assemble at home, like an actual soundproof booth, soundproof, relatively speaking, or have you not built one yet at all? And it looks like 50% of you said you DIY, you built a booth, which, you know, I pretty much expected because, you know, and that everybody has the ability to convert a closet or to buy a booth, right? 27% uh, of you said you converted a closet. 7% um, of you said you have a Whisper Room or Studio Bricks. I would love to have a Studio Bricks VO edition. That is one of my goals. I just don't have the room for one. So I had to do the next best thing and convert this weird little storage closet <laughs> into a studio. And then 21% of you said you haven't built one yet. So I'm hoping that something in this conversation today can help maybe give you an idea of what you can utilize or how you can build one in the space that you have available. So let us go over to the comments and see who's here first. Who's in first today? Musical Neptunian. How you doing? Thanks for being first. Um, I have chosen DIY if I am allowed the poetic license of having built anything. <laughs> Give yourself some credit. If you built something to use to record in, then yes. Give yourself credit for having built it. It doesn't matter what it is. If you've built it, give yourself some credit for it. Absolutely. Uh, my recording space is unusual in a lot of ways. Oh, you must give details. <laughs> Elaborate, please. To me, this can be a basic topic, and it pretty much is. Pretty much is a basic topic. If, if you guys recall, I did a poll a few weeks ago about where everybody was in their own journey in, into this endeavor, and a, a vast majority of you said you were just getting started. So that's why I kind of wanted to go back to the basics, just so we could have conversations and help those just, you know, to help them maybe follow their dreams and decide whether or not this is something that they really want to do. Um, but to continue with your comment, but if someone wants to go into acoustic physics, then I can get advanced for sure. 
Um, we're going to keep this pretty much basic today because, again, the majority of the people that watch my channel are just getting started out. Those of you that answered the poll anyway are just getting started out. So we wanted to see if we can help with that. Uh, Matthew Russell is here. Good morning, Matthew. Good after well, good afternoon to you, sir. <laughs> Uh, then Matthew says, I had eagerly sent an audition on ACX. I left out some of the crediting. Is it worth it to send it again, more completed, or just go on to the next? I would say just go on to the next. I'm not sure what you mean by some of the crediting. Was it like a, was it just the credit sections of the book? What do you mean by crediting? I, my first, my first instinct says just to go on to the next because at this point, it might be, there might be a lot of other auditions to listen through at this point. And I think if, depending on what it is exactly that you're referring to, I think in just an audition, the client is looking for what your voice sounds like and if it matches what it is that they're looking for. So hopefully your audition will give them that. So I would move on to the next. Just keep going. Audition, audition, audition. And then Matthew says, I find a great deal of VO actors on Fiverr that have very professional loops in their presentations. Are they just gathering work they've previously done? For the most part, I, I yeah, I, I would think so. Mm -hmm. That's where we get most of our uh, content that we used for demos. Unless you're having um, a professional demo made, then sometimes those packages for professional demos will come with script writing to and then they coach you through the recording process and then they polish it up real nice with music and sound effects and things but i would say myself included um the majority of us just take work that we've already done with the client's permission to use it of course and create a demo like a just a reel like little samples of what we've done in the past of actual work so they can hear the final product uh joy is here Hello, Joya. I put myself in a corner and padded the walls behind me. In front of my desk are bookcases that are padded. I hang a blanket over the top connected to the wall behind me. It's not perfect, but it works. And that's all that really matters, right? When it comes to record your recording space, it doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly constructed. As long as it is, it's not falling on you <laughs> while you're trying to record then, you know, as long as it sounds good, right? <laughs> uh, Annie's here. What's up, Annie? Uh, hey, Angela, I've been taking a break from VO, but I've missed hearing your voice and seeing your lovely face. Oh, darling. I miss seeing your face, too. And you know what? Sometimes you do have to take a break. And I get that. Believe me, I get that. Sometimes you got to take a break and focus on other things, and that's okay. But I hope that you come back. I hope that you come back. I really do. Uh, Pamela says, uh, good morning from San Pedro. Good morning, Pamela. It's good to see you. And he says, uh, my booth is a four by five nook in my laundry room. There you go. Uh, I, I mean, over the course of the last few years, I've been working with other um, aspiring voice artists and discovering and talking about the places that they want to record in and that they have available to them to, to convert to a recording space. There's been, you know, kitchen pantries, there's been basements, there's been laundry rooms, there's been, you know, extra bedroom, there's been their, their walk-in closet, you know, they're where a little nook in a living room, right? As long as you can sanction it off and, you know, kind of close it off so you don't have the echo in the room and things like that. If you can make it work, you know, you could probably make one just about anywhere. You know, noisy apartments in New York City and in San Francisco, you know, big like studio apartments with a lot of echo. I mean, I've seen it done. So don't be discouraged if you look around your place and you go, there's just no way in heck I'm going to make this happen. Because you can, it might take a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of creativity, but, you know, you can make it work. Uh, Terry says, good morning, y'all. Good morning, Terry. Good to see you here. Writer dude, good morning. 
happy you're here. Uh, Terry says, my recording Shelley, <laughs> is out back in the shed. There you go. Another idea. Hot as hell. The equipment is off during the day. I record early, early in the morning. Did I mention early? You did. And I get that. Uh, I find a lot of us just perusing through, you know, the interwebs and social media. There's a lot of people that have to um, work in the morning, early in the morning or late at night, just because of noise. Speaking of which, my other half just got home. Sorry if you can hear all of that. <laughs> uh, Caesar said, uh, good morning, Angela. Good morning, Caesar, to you and the rest of the cast and crew. I don't use a booth, but plan on building one out of mineral wood, bo mineral wool boards. Say that 10 times fast. Mineral wool boards. Currently use a very treated spare bedroom turned studio. Well, there you go. Awesome. Um, when you plan on building one, you have to let us know how you go, how it goes, your process. Keep us updated. <laughs> Test Stalker, I love my cove. I love, I call this my cave of wonders. <laughs> what I call it, because it's when the lights aren't on, it's very, you know, glum and dark in here, but I like it because it's better for my eyeballs. You know, I love it dim when I work. Uh, Tiff's Stellar Reed says, what multiple income streams do VOs typically have? Whatever you want them to be. Whatever you want them to be. It doesn't have to be VO related even, right? You, If you have other skill sets, then offer them online. But I'd say the vast majority of us have, um, if you're into audiobooks, you'll have royalties from audiobooks. You'll also have um, pay per finished hour audiobooks. You'll have VO work that you get. Um, but you could have any kind of other like little side hustle, little, uh, you know, if you write a book, you get the royalties from that. Um, if you, like me, have other skills and talents that you make available online for people to purchase, you could do that. If you want to, like me also, resell books on Amazon, you can do that. There's a lot of other things that you could do to have um, other streams of income. If you want to be a OBM or a virtual assistant, do that. If you want to be a moderator for Zoom meetings or webinars do that. If you are a photographer, do that. If you want to design websites, do that. If you want to market, create content for people on social media, do that, right? There's a lot of things that you could do to create a, an additional stream of income. Uh, JCC AOL says, I have a porta booth. It does the job. So there you go. There you go. Is it one of those ones that is it like a like a PVC build or is it one of those ones that you ordered and you just kind of um, I've seen them. They have like little windows in them and stuff, but they're all like moving blankets and soft material. Is it one of those? Caesar says, oh, by the way, I got my new mic. I posted it on the VO gear on our platinum discord. Very happy with it. Naturally dark and vintage. It's also a beautiful mic. Posted a couple of samples there, too. Well, that's awesome. What I haven't seen it yet. What microphone is it? Uh, JCC AOL says Johnny Hardwick. He was on King of the Hill. If anyone is not familiar with his work, Johnny Hardwick. Were we talking about Johnny Hardwick? Hello, honey. Hello. Hello. Love you too. I'll see you in a little bit. Uh, Dylan Holt says, good morning from the broom closet at the nine to five. <laughs> it's so funny. I use what another VO pro called a hobo fort. That would be Anthony Pika, I assume. He talked a lot about his uh, hobo fort that he built when he first got started. I'm in a rural area, so it's pretty quiet anyways, but without noise reduction, my noise floor is around negative 62 dB. Well, that's cool. And again, if you don't need noise reduction effects or plugins, then don't use them, right? Don't get caught up in what everybody else says. Oh, you know, you got to do this and you got to do that and don't do this and don't do that. If it doesn't apply to you, don't do it. You don't use it. You don't need it. Don't don't use it because it's just going to end up, you know, making you sound weird, you know, tinny or hollow or, you know, well, that's awesome. 
Isabel's here. Good morning, Isabel. Um, or is it afternoon for you? Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Using a moving blanket surrounding my closet doors. I have to assemble it every time, so not ideal, but I'm still trying to find the best workaround yet. And you know what? Um, Anthony Pika, who we were just talking about with the hobo fort, if you know his story, in his very beginnings, he had to assemble the hobo fort every night to do work and then disassemble it every morning when he was done with work and then do that every day. He had to build it and then take it down every day to do the work in it. So, and look at him now, right? So it's probably a temporary fix, but again, as long as it works, it's not ideal, but hopefully it's a temporary thing and it just has to sound good, right? Tess says, I love my converted walk-in closet. No exterior walls, insulated and treated with Oralex from Dracula. <laughs> Uh, yes, I snorted. Coffee time from my vampire mug. I think it's appropriate. That's so funny. Dracula. I'll stick with Dracula. Michael V says, mine isn't PVC, but a full engineered-ish booth <laughs> built with two by four and sheetrock and treated. That is awesome. I know a few people who actually had the the skill and the space to do that. And again, I was limited in characters with the choices. So even if it's not PVC, if it's wood and, you know, Oralex and if it's fully treated and fully built by you, please share. Because that is so cool. Um, Facebook user, this is Patricia Hauser. Good morning, Patricia. Uh, good morning. Watching you on the TV, pecking on my phone. Oh, don't, no, you don't want to see my face on a big TV. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm glad you're here though, Patricia. Matthew Russell, are there websites with advanced stock footage to, to share or market? Um, I use Storyblocks. I have a membership with storyblocks.com. And with that membership, I have a license to use all the digital assets that are there. And uh, what is there is music, sound effects, uh, video footage, um, still images. There are after effects. There's a ton of stuff on there. And, you know, you have the license to use them. So if your clients ever have an issue with anything copyright wise, then you just provide them with the license to use it. But that is what I I use. But just know that anything that you do use from Storyblocks or pretty much any other place online that you have a license to use these products, you have to mix it in with your own. You have to make something out of it. You can't just sell a standalone file that usually will break your license agreement on most of those places. Or you could always create your own stock footage, right? If you can, why not? And then put that on Pixabay or something. Dylan Holt says, uh, eight three-way PVC joints, eight four-foot PVC pipes, four seven-foot PVC pipes put together and hung moving blankets from shower curtain rollers. Put up some LED lights and it's my own personal studio. That's awesome. You got to have the LED lights too. Not really, but I like them. <laughs> they add some ambiance, right? It's like I always say, if you're building a studio and you have the ability to really dress it up, make it like your dream teenage bedroom. Like for me with all the lights and the Funko Pops and stuff. I, hey, I'm in here for the majority of the day, every day. So I'm going to make it my own. I'm going to make it fun and cozy, right? So I hang those LED lights. I love it, Dylan. It's awesome. Terry says, the VO landing page on my website is being finalized as we speak. That's awesome. Good for you. Are you doing it yourself? Or are you having somebody do it for you? Inquiring minds want to know. Dwight is here. Good morning, Dwight. I hung PVC pipe in two squares, uh, an inner one and an outer one suspended from the ceiling. Then I covered the outer square with handcrafted quilts, then over the inner one and one quilt over both for the ceiling. Wow, that is cool. An inner one and an outer one. Oh, okay. Look at that. Crafty. Caesar says, 
I went DIY because I reached out to a specialist and they gave me a $5,000 cost estimate, despite my telling them that I was just starting out. So I put on my MacGyver briefs and went to work. And there you go. Most of the things that are available online from other people or places are probably easily built with just a little bit of, you know, time, patience, and elbow grease, right? And probably at a fraction of the cost if you source the material on your own and build it yourself. And a little bit of MacGyver, spirit of MacGyver. <laughs> hey, Sunny. Good morning, Angela. I'm in a small bedroom with uh, 11 DIY acoustic panels. My only concern is that no one else in the group has done this. But you're not the only person that I've heard of doing this. If you have a, a whole, I think it comes down to people don't really have a lot of people anyway. don't have a whole room to dedicate to this. So they don't have an extra room. They just have like a nook or corner or, you know, because people live in the other rooms or something. Um, but I have seen other people do just that. They'll have an existing room and not treat every single wall, but just have uh, meticulously placed acoustic panels. So you're not the only person that I know of that's done this. But I think in our group, you might be one of the few or only. Uh, Writer Dude says, I have my desk under my loft bed, so my mattress is right above me. It seems to work well, but I haven't recorded much, so I have to run some tests. Yes, just make sure, I mean, your mattress above you is a good thing to help reduce some of the echo, but just make sure that you also treat the wall in front of you, the walls to the sides of you, uh, the floor underneath you, the wall behind you, of course, and um, anything in front of you that might also reflect, like uh, desk surfaces can also reflect. So just keep all of those things in mind also. Uh, Caesar says to Sunny, actually, that's my setup. Well, there you go. Spare bedroom turned studio. I have uh, DIY acoustic panels everywhere. Still need more for the ceiling and base traps. Also need to, repl to replace the doors. Oh, that's cool. Uh, MJ Thunder 22 says I have an office space. Well, that's cool. You have a whole office space? Sweet. Kathleen is here. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Angela. I have a PVC three-sided tent sort of thing that is open in the front, like a sort of like a teepee. <laughs> I have a chaotic eyeball to take care of the open front. The noise floor is good. It's not loud enough on the other end. Um, it's not loud enough on the other end. You mean like you might need to adjust your gain, like the volume going into the recording? If that is the case, then consider turning up your gain if that's what it is. That's what it sounds like. Cool. Studio TPs. <laughs> Michael V says, tell your other half we all said hi. I will. He's already upstairs. <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> Thank you. Eric says, just wanted to say good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Eric. How are you, buddy? Um, You know what? Let's check the poll really quick. All right, so the poll again, if you're just joining, we're talking about that we're getting back to basics, right? So I wanted to hear about what type of recording space you have, right? And and I'm hoping that if you already have something built that you'll share how you built it or what you used so you can help potentially help somebody else in the chat with building theirs if they haven't yet. So let's see. Um, yeah, because it looks like 26% of you, 39 votes and 26% of you said you haven't built one yet. So I'm hoping that this conversation today will help to give you some ideas. But it looks like 44% of you said that you DIY will, DIY will, <laughs> DIY build or PVC like you built your own studio. 23% of you said that you converted a closet, much like myself. 8% uh, of you said that you have a booth, very envious. And uh, again, 26% of you said you haven't built one yet. Okay, so I'm hoping that our conversations today will help you if you haven't built one yet to give you some ideas. Um, <laughs> where did I leave off? Here we go, Caesar. Caesar says, the mic is a Loughton Audio LA220 V2. 
it was challenging to acquire where I live. Bet. Luckily, I had a connection who provides gear for larger studios. We met, did the exchange, went home, did a happy dance. <laughs> that is so cool. I don't know much about that particular microphone, so I'm going to have to go and check it out. Uh, Tiff's Stellar Reed says, if I don't have a spare room or closet to do my VO recordings, does this mean I can't do it at all? No. No, it does not. As we've discussed a few times already, there you could build one out of, you know, PVC or wood or, you know, secure a corner in a room where you can kind of cordon off with moving blankets or something soft to help reduce the echo in the room. Uh, she then says, I literally have no space except for my bedroom. You could probably sacrifice a small corner of your bedroom, or you might even have to um, build something and take it down, you know, build something to get inside and record in and then take it down. There's a, a handful of people that have done it that way until they had a space that they could dedicate to recording. Don't give up. Joya says, off topic, but so fun. I added those vampires and loop in at your request. Thank you. Fay, evil witches, dragons, mer people, vampires, lupin. Am I missing anything important? Don't ask me because I will throw in a lot of requests. Platinum, join the fun. Uh, go platinum, join the fun. Yes, what uh, Joy is talking about is uh, in our platinum group, we are creating an audio drama. And Joya is, along with a couple of other people, have put in a lot of time and effort into uh, taking this book and that they've written and made it into a um, <laughs> an audio drama. It, there's a, there's a lot more work that I'm that I'm letting on here, but anyway, as a group, we're creating this audio drama. Everybody's got a different part, and then Joy is going to add in some soundscapes and sound effects, and it's going to be amazing. But at our, our last meeting, I had I had requested vampires and maybe even werewolves, and it looks like she added those in. So I'm very excited about that. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. But don't ask if there's anything else because. You'll be sorry I did. <laughs> Caesar says, when my wife's in the city, I put you up on our big TV. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that because then I'm going to feel so sorry for you. Just be happy this is not in like 4K. <laughs> That's intentional. Nobody wants to see this in 4K. No. I watch you while any one of our 11 cats walk around the sound bar and bat curiously at your mouth when you talk. Well, if that doesn't make me self-conscious, I don't know what, what will. <laughs> oh, my God. Sunny says, Caesar, oh, cool. Are bass traps actually effective? I've heard varying opinions. And just like anything else, Sunny, you'll hear, hear varying opinions about everything. Everybody has a varying opinion on everything everything. So as I've always said, just take everything in. You know, there's a ton of people on YouTube. There's a ton of people on social media. There's a ton of coaches out there and everybody has varying levels of opinions on different things. So take it all in, right? YouTube, social media, take it all in and just use what applies and leave what doesn't. And try a couple of different things. You never know when you might hear something that just you just go, oh, maybe I could use that to fix this, whatever the problem is. And maybe it will. Right. You never know. So just take it all in. You never know where you're going to pick up a golden nugget here or there. Right. Uh, Dwight says, please be safe, my friends, when building or buying studio sound deadening material. It is best to use fire rated materials. The big fire in RI was accelerated because panels weren't safe fire rated. Oh my gosh. Yes. Keep that in mind. Safety first. And wear eye protection when you're building. Caesar says to Sunny, uh, bass traps aren't very critical if just for VO. And if you're using headphones from what I've heard, but I plan on doing music sometime in the future. So bass traps will be needed. JCCAOL says, my Porta booth was one I bought online and it has soundproof foam. Oh, that's cool. Soundproof foam? 
sound sound treating foam perhaps it's hard to sound completely soundproof anything but if it works again it works right Dylan says, uh, I had to go DIY because of the price and I had the ability and skills to do it. If they don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, gosh, what just happened? What just happened? I had. Um, oh, my gosh, it's like the, it just glitched out. Here we go. Lost my spot for a second. Sorry, guys. Uh Tyken Tyken Dalor. So sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Jean in Texas. Thank you for that. <laughs> Good morning, Angela. I made the mistake of buying a Snap Studio portable booth from Amazon for $500 only to find out our walk-in closet is quieter. And you're not going to always just inherently know these things. Sometimes there is a little bit of trial and error in trying things. And sometimes you discover that some of the trials are expensive. Some of them are, are hard, expensive lessons to learn, but you wouldn't have known unless you tried, right? Could you sell it, perhaps? Maybe sell the Snap Studio and make a little bit of that back? Just thought. Chrissy Sal says, made it. Hey, Chrissy. Hello, Angela. Hope your day is going well. I've got a PVC blanket fort inside my walk-in closet. Well, there you go. Again, it doesn't have to be complicated, right? It just has to sound good. Caesar says to Jean, that's unfortunate. The Snap Studio vocal booth is more for acoustic treatment and not for soundproofing. You could presumably shove that Snap Studio into your walk-in closet. Perhaps. Or you could sell it, right? Maybe someone could use, maybe you could use parts of it to help line the inside of your walk-in closet, like Caesar said. <clears throat> I don't know much ab about the particulars of this particular vocal booth, but if you could use, utilize parts of it for something else. Um, clicking buttons arbitrarily, sorry guys. Uh, Test Talker says, my first booth was the walk-in closet with a bunch of clothes in it. it. Actually worked well, just a little crowded. Yes, and if you do choose to use a, a closet, to record in and there's clothes in it, leave the clothes in. Those will definitely help you in your endeavors for recording voiceover, audiobooks, or whatever, because it'll help to reduce the echo. And again, don't don't forget to treat anything above you, below you, in front of you, to the sides, behind, to make sure that everything around you is pretty much treated so you don't have any echo or, you know, it doesn't sound boxy. But test as you go along, as you're building out your recording space, test periodically. Do a short recording, listen back to it and see how it sounds. And then if you need more treatment somewhere else, then treat it, right? Treat it or test it as you go along. Caesar says to Gene, otherwise disassemble that Snap Studio and retrofit the frame into the moving blanket and hanker. hanger. There you go. Utilize some parts of it if you want. I think that's a great idea. Uh, Kathleen says, thank you. I'm try, I'll try turning up the gain. I still haven't recorded anything. Don't know what's holding me back. Um, maybe I just need a little more confidence. I think you just need to go. I think it looks more like a, I think you just need to go. Just go. Just do it. What do you, you're, I think what's holding you back is you. You're telling yourself that you're not perhaps ready or that you don't sound good or that you don't have X, Y, or Z to move forward. And I think all of that is just baloney. As long as you have the basic things, go. Because you're never going to know what you need to fix, what you need to work on, if you need... Um, I'm getting ahead of myself, but if you're at the point where you're start uh, the testing recording and then you're letting other people listen to it to give you feedback on, you'll, in doing that, you'll find that maybe you have an echo or maybe you have a little bit of sibilance or you have, um, maybe you need a little bit of um, help or spend some time with a, co a coach in a particular type of voice acting. You won't know any of these things to be able to progress unless you get started. 
And again, if you're haven't got started yet, I mean, if you're sitting in a in a recording space by yourself, no one's looking at you, no one's judging you. Just record it. It's just you, right? No one's looking at you. Just record it and get started, and then ask for feedback. Just close your eyes and hit send, and then upload it to you know if you're in my Facebook group, just upload it to my Facebook group and ask for feedback. And then just be open-minded when you get that feedback and then listen to what is being said. So that way you can address some of the issues so you can continue to progress and get better and get better and get better, right? But you can't do all of that until you just take that first step. Just go. Just do. Sunny says, I would definitely like to have one of those modular boots from the British company I linked you to a few months ago. It's like a private playroom. <laughs> if only I had the room in my little playhouse. Writer Dude says, TVs are often more convenient now than a laptop or desktop for viewing a live stream. Also, don't sell your yourself short. Uh, that, you know, that whole idea makes my introvert scream a little. Because <laughs> I'm... I'm looking at myself in, you know, like a little, a box on, and, and I don't want to think about that being any bigger because I, oh boy, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop thinking about it before I make myself nuts. But thank you. Esteban says, hello, Angela. Interesting topic. I built mine. Very happy and very effective result. It has soundproofed walls and acoustically treated inside. It measures 4.2 feet wide by 5.10 feet long by 6.88 feet high. Wow. So that sounds pretty close to what I've got here. And my little cave of wonders is pretty similar in uh... <laughs> my brain just went blank in um, measurement. That's cool. See, build it, build it. And voiceover Van Dien, who we haven't seen in a while. How are you, buddy? Afternoon, full floating four by four custom booth build here with a six inch of RWA 45 acoustic treatment, depending on wall and ceiling. That's cool. What kind of, is it, is it like a name brand custom booth or was it like a custom built booth for you? Either way, cool. I'd like one. Isabel says, how I'm watching the stream at the moment. Upside down. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you guys. Terry says, just join, just join Storyblocks. I needed a source. Well, there you go. That's what that's what I use. And I've never had any issues. They have a ton of stuff. I mean, as you guys know, I do a lot of uh, meditations and affirmations and um things of that nature, podcast editing. So those, the music and the sound effects available there I use. And then also the video footage, looped, static, you know, still images. There's a lot of stuff on there if you're, if you're a creative and work with audio and video. It's, a, it's an awesome site. Uh, Joy says, hello, ver hello everyone from Southfield, Michigan. I have a converted closet with clothes pillow. Well, like a pillow fort. <laughs> Pillow fort with clothes and pillows. There you go. See, it doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, Sunny says, just wondering if you notice when some members go missing. I'm thinking of two people in particular that were active, but I haven't seen in a while now. Yes, there comes a time when people decide to leave the group. People come in, they get what they need, and then, you know, maybe that's all they need, and then they move on. But um, it happens. It happens. I mean, I don't, it's fine. You know, come in. If you're done, then you're done. <laughs> right. But you're right. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of uh, new people and we've had a few people go. Uh, Joya says, Miss Angela is now a movie star <laughs> at Isabel Ruiz's house. I saw that pic on Discord. Oh my God. Don't know. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. I have to go look now. And then I'm just going to be sorry I did. <laughs> 
Terry says, recording so early in the morning is challenging for chronic morning voice. Oh, I know. Don't I know it? Yes, especially when you haven't warmed up and you're just like getting into the coffee phase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, recording is challenging early in the morning. You have to, you really have to warm up first. Ah, speaking of which. Uh, Joy says, right now, because of the recent knee replacement surgery, I'm going to build a PVC fort around where you're hanging out. That's cool. Anthony Pika says he is going to do a video about it, which is so nice of him. And you know, I thought he had, I thought he had a video about that a while ago. Oh God, I could swear that he did, that he already had one. But he should, because that is definitely something. And I've, oh, maybe, you know, I've seen others on YouTube that have built similar things, like a DIY, like portable booth. So check on YouTube. There might be some already existing. But Anthony, I could have swore that he already had one. Uh, Caesar says to Sonny, maybe they got stuck in their booth. <laughs> Isabel says, I'm going to be in trouble. Nice knowing you guys. <laughs> Is this because of the picture? Oh my gosh, you guys. Stop it. I'm going to have to go and look now. I'm holding myself back at the moment. A simple tailor says, hey, Angela, have you heard of VOs using one of those rentable storage spaces as a recording space with sound treatment? Of course. I, um, no. Mm -mm. I know that there's been several around the Phoenix area that have popped up. They've been like um, exactly that pretty much where they are rentable storage, not storage, but they're rentable studio spaces that you can either rent for uh, photography purposes for video or for podcasting or for voiceover recording. I've seen them, more of them popping up in my city anyway, but um, I haven't heard of anybody. I know podcast clients that have used them, but none for VO. Although it's pretty close, right? But so far, um, I have not heard of a whole lot of voice actors using them. I think it would be more cost effective just to build something in your own place that you could get into and use at any time of the day or night. <clears throat> but no, not a whole lot of people using those uh, in my experience anyway. Nick Davis says, ceiling treatment. How to get it to stick. Thumbtacks. <laughs> Need help on my ceiling treatment. My closet conversation is uh, temporary, hopefully. For me, I used uh, moving blankets and like heavy duty thumbtacks. And I just, I mean, there are holes in the wall. Yeah, but you just use a little spackle, a little paint. It's like they never were thumbtacks, like the, the big ones. They work just fine. Uh, Caesar says to Isabel, you'll be fine. You should see what I posted. Oh, st stop it. You guys. God. Heading to Discord right after this is over. <laughs> Dylan says, I've gotten enough free info over the past couple of months, so it's time to start paying for it. I just signed up for the Platinum Group. Yay. We'll see you then. See you all Thursday. That's sweet. So it's a good thing that we added a few more characters to the audio drama because we have still new people joining. So that's awesome. Maybe Dylan could be one of the vampires or one of the werewolves. Mm. Dwight says, I signed up for Discord, but I haven't found the group yet. Any suggestions? Um, if you go to my website, go to the VO Workshop Live page, you know, the page where I have all of the recorded meetings and the calendar. Right above the calendar is the, the button to join the Thursday meeting. And there's also a button to join our Discord. That will take you directly there. If that is an issue, then just send me a, a chat message and I'll send you the link to join directly. Uh, Evie says, my initial idea of treating the unused shower stall in the unfinished basement was a bust. 
I vastly underestimated the noise from the HVAC and all the plumbing running through the space. Oh, no. But if you have an unfinished basement, at least you have somewhere to build something else on, unless you're, if you're using it for something else. But you still have other opportunities, perhaps? That's how I would look at it. You still have opportunities. Yes. Joya says to Caesar, how? Just how? Miss Angela's going to go red. You guys, stop making me paranoid. <laughs> God. Voiceover Van Dean says, apologies for absence. Kept losing track of Thursdays or Tuesdays. It's okay. I don't even know what day it is half the time. <laughs> I don't see sun. <laughs> The whole studio, desk, booth are all my own work. It's relatively simple for anyone with a bit of DIY experience. That is cool. I envy you. If I had more room and space in my little tiny playhouse, I would definitely build something. I just don't. But I'm lucky that I have this space that I could use. But it's okay. It's good to see you from time to time. Sunny says, oh, my God. No, no. Stop it, you guys. Please look at the Discord. No, no, I'm so afraid. Caesar says to Joya, she'll be okay. It's like a live representation of one of her Q&As on Thursday Zoom calls. Is it me? Like, is it like a still, like a screenshot of me just making a weird face? Oh, you guys. Writer Dude says, there are a lot of rentable office studio business spaces in my area. Some quite reasonable. The closest to me had some podcasters, a couple internet radio stations, etc. That's cool. Yeah, I see a lot more of these, <clears throat> excuse me, popping up over the course of the last year or two. So definitely. I don't even know what those run. I'd be interested if it would be cost effective, at least to get started. But then once you do build your own studio... How then you would have to you know have you'd have to be able to match the sound, or at least get close, right? Uh, Nick says to voiceover Van Dean, "Where did you get the uh, RWA forty five from? From the RWA forty five fairy." <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Joya says, "Can Dylan put up a voice sample in voice sample in Discord? I have roles that need filling." Yes, there you go, Dylan Holt. If you are on our Discord, if you've joined our group Discord for Platinum Group, then in the voice sample thread, put a recording of yourself in there so Joya can give you a role in our audio drama. And we'll be talking about that not this Thursday, but next Thursday. We'll be going through the audio drama together. Um. Evie says, yes, on the upside, I showed my husband the Studio Bricks website and he put on his contractor hat. That is so cool. I have now completely lost control of the scale of this project. Send help. No, no, I'm going to say I'm jelly. That is so cool. Let him, let, let him do it. <laughs> Just let him do it. Because I have a feeling when you're done or when he's done, you're going to have a pretty cool thing to show for it. That's awesome. Barb says, hi, Angela. The picture is fine. No weird face and the image is just a still of your Tuesday Q&A. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'm still going to go and look. I'm going to make me all paranoid now. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's take one other look at the poll. And again, today's poll, for those of you just getting started, I and I hope some of the things that you've heard today will definitely help um, give you some ideas on where and how to build your own recording space. Um, but again, today's poll was what type of recording space do you have? And let's see what everybody's saying. So right now we have 40, 49, 49 votes. It keeps changing, 49 votes. And it looks like, wow, it's a pretty, pretty good split now. So 39% of you said it was a DIY build. Um, PVC, wood, et cetera. It's something that you built. 31% uh, of you said you took a, a pre-existing closet and converted it. 8% of you, the lucky ones, I'm so jelly of you, that have the Whisper Room or the Studio Bricks booth. And then 22% of you said you haven't built one yet. So for you, 
people that have voted on haven't built one yet. I'm hoping that the things that we discussed today will give you some ideas. And if they have, then please share. Because that is the whole point of today is to help those of you wanting to get started at least, you know, give you hope that if you just have like a corner of a room that you can dedicate to this, that's okay. If it, you need to build something every night and take it back down when you're done working, that's okay. If you just have a walk-in closet that maybe the, you know, second half or the back half of it is available to use, that's okay. Just do it. Uh, okay. So where are we at? A writer dude. Um, to a simple tailor, using a rentable storage space is a novel idea, but make sure you can get power into the space you want to use. Also, make sure you can use it at odd hours. And I think that is going to be the ca the caveat for those rentable spaces is that, you know, voiceover is a is a global business, right? So some of your clients might be on the other side of the globe and might ask you to you know, at three o'clock in the morning, you'll have to do a revision or a pickup or something. And you might not be able to get into a rentable booth space until six, seven, eight, you know, in the morning. So that might be a factor that you'll need to take into consideration if you decide to go rent a space. Um, Voiceover Van Dien says to Nick Davis, I used Travis Perkins, but don't think they stock it anymore. And JT Dove are cheaper. I'm in the UK, by the way. He is one of our UK VOs. No frog. Well, frog did make an, a cameo a couple times today already, but for the most part, no frog. Maybe a little frog. Not as much frog. Uh, Michael V says, I'm on VO Angela website and can't find the Discord. Um, the, the Discord that we're talking about is for my platinum group. If you're not in my platinum group, then there are some pages that will not be accessible to you unless you are in my platinum group. I should have specified. But yes, my platinum group is what I'm talking about. That's where we meet every Thursday. We have our own discord. We have the audio drama going on. Um, we work on a lot of things every Thursday. We're just a big goofy family at this point, but there's Believe, believe it or not, there's like somewhere between 60 and 70 people in our group now. And there's a good chunk of them. I'd say roughly half show up uh, every Thursday and then people can hop in and hop out. But we meet for about two hours ish on Thursday nights and we go over lots of things and have a lot of fun. It's very casual. Everybody brings a drink. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. I love my peeps. Uh, Mary HP, speaking of peeps. Morning, Angela. My tiny closet is amazing. And there you go. There you go. Amazing. Joy says, why hasn't anyone tried the four poster bed with curtains? I think it would work very well. I think that would be a good idea for Joy. Joy, do you have a, full, a four poster bed? That's an idea. You just hang some stuff all over the sides. That would be cool. Hmm. There you go. Joy says, I have physical therapy Thursday, but I'm coming to our meetup. So what are we doing this week? Oh, I have clothes and pillows in my closet. There you go. This week, we're talking about uh, video game voiceovers. We have uh, some of the very talented people in our group have written some scripts for us to use and going over some video game voiceover. So that's what we're doing this week. And then next week, we'll be going through our audio drama. So I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited about this week, too. It'll be fun doing video game voiceovers. Um, so I think that is everything that I have for you guys today. I'm going to go say hi to my other half who's been gone for a couple days. So everybody, you guys have a fabulous week. I look forward to seeing everybody next week. And um, take care. Bye. <laughs>